More revelations have come to light about the Alara Apartments in Canberra. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, I'm Florian Heiser and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm still working through my shine of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC because it draws attention to the Alara Apartments in Canberra. New revelations, new things have been brought about from the, a the Four Corners investigation. It's a fantastic piece, I should suggest you all watch it. Now I spoke about this building back in February of this year, so I thought we'll jump in and have a look to see what the revelations are. So, Four Corners reveals new details about troubled Alara complex, as ACT government says it's doing all it can. Well, this morning we saw, or earlier today, we saw just how much the Victorian Building Authority was doing with a certifier who had complaints, serious complaints, I would say, leveled against him, a disciplinary action years before they did anything about him. So, I think think they may be able to oh maybe either the government can do more or they're just admitting how incompetent they are you know how these big bureaucratic machines we create sometimes don't move very fast and that can be a good thing it can be a really good thing that they're slow it can be a really bad thing that they're slow so dodgy construction work will always be the responsibility of the construction sector and not government the act's building quality minister has said after further revelations about the construction of one of canberra's most troubled unit blocks okay then why is victoria paying to remove fire cladding why but that's that's victoria that's different it's not act yesterday four corners suggested the alara apartments in canberra's north appeared to have been under a so-called design and construct model where a well-known architect w was enlisted in order for the development to be approved, but removed from the project prior to construction beginning. Yep, yeah, I've spoken about design and construct often, and that's when I say the issue with procurement. That's what I mean. It's the way the building is procured, the way it's, it's constructed, the whole process from the engagement of the first consultants all the way to the handover. And if you're using a design and construct methodology, the problem is that the... I might... You know, what we'll do is we'll jump to a little sketch. I'll do a little diagram for you. Okay, guys, I've got my surface ready. Let's jump on there and do a quick diagram to explain this DNC concept if you're not familiar with it. So let's say we've got a, a typical development project, a typical development project. And up here we've got this party. This is the developer. Okay, the developer there. Now what he does at the concept stage would be to engage an architect to prepare the concept design. And this is where they're getting a brand name, big, you know, flash architect. And what this architect does in, in conjunction with other people, with town planners, you know, some surveyors and other consultants, would be preparing a scaled back design of your building. And just showing you what you're going to get and just a concept some rough materials a concept set of drawings so this is a simplified idea set of drawings and you might progress it a little bit to a da stage and what da is that's ha, no i'm not going to update you right now thank you right when i'm filming so what you go is you go for da which is development approval this is the first stage of the process when the council you know the council gives approval to proceed so they tick off on the development of these drawings they may make some little amendments go oh you got to change this you've got to change this but yeah it's approved boom okay so the developer has his concept drawings here and he wants to be able to take it to the next stage so what he does but this architect he's too expensive so he ditches him he ditches him so he takes his DA drawings, he's ditched that other architect, he takes his DA drawings, so here's our dev, and he's got his, his DA drawings here, you know, which are simplified information with some stuff from council as well. Okay, that's what he has. And then he goes out, he goes out and he engages a builder under a design and construct contract. 
So what he does is he goes and gets a contractor. He's here under DNC. So because it's DNC, this means that the contractor is responsible for finishing off the design. Remember, this is just a DA design. This isn't a complete and thorough and detailed set of drawings. So the developer only gives the contractor this information. Then the contractor engages an architect, the engineers, depending on the job, the building certifier. Or the building certifier could be working for the developer. But here's the thing. Sometimes they go cheap on the engineer, reduce their scope, and get their subbies to do it. And by subbies, it could be your electric electrician, your fire sprinkler guys, all of them. And they each will prepare their own set of designs for just their limited piece of work. Now, that can work. That can be fired on certain jobs if the subbies know what they're doing. Some of the subbies are pretty bloody good. But the problem is, and this is what falls on the architect, is coordinating these guys. Is making sure they all work the same. Making sure this electrical subby is taking account of what this guy's doing, what this guy's doing. And then that all feeds into what the architect's doing, then the original design, and then the other work of the engineer. So you can see how it can become a real mess. But here is the biggest thing. Now, this is the DA drawings. That's what council has approved. The building certifier, when all this mess comes together, you'll get a revised set of drawings, which are the building approval drawings. And, you know, I don't know, we'll just say they've they've cut a big chunk of the building out or something. They've made some changes. So, and maybe they've missed some things from council, but... These are the construction drawings that goes back to the developer. It'll probably happen while the construction is actually going on, to be honest. And the certifier can stamp it. He can say, yep, that's all deemed to satisfy, satisfy or in compliance with what the with what the DA is. So he checks this against this and gives it a big tick. Now, because the certifier is working for the contractor or working for the developer there's a conflict of interest and because all these people are also working under the contractor not the developer there's also a conflict of interest so who's representing the end user here in this scenario who's looking out for the needs of the public and there you go there's the issue in this sector but if we just have a, you can see just how much of a of an issue it is now complicated it can be okay so let's jump back to the article. That's a real real brief overview of, of it, but you can see how much of a mess it can become. So after some apartments in the Lara project were sold off the plan, again, off the plan, the development's B&T Construction and its director, Ivan Bullum, removed an acclaimed architect for architecture firm from the project. There you go. Building defects consultant Ross Taylor told the program it was a common tactic used by developers during the construction phase. See, that's the thing. I, I seem to forget. I seem to forget that I'm so used to this now. I'm so used to it having worked in the, in the industry. And don't get me wrong, I've worked on some really good design and construct projects. Really good ones that worked really well. Can you guess what they were? They were large mining projects very technical even then there was some issues with just fitting everything in and getting the the actual getting the engineers to think like a subby that was the thing because i wanted the engineers to document everything you know to uh, very accurately in a building information model so we could make sure it could all work because it was remotely constructed where well, it's a bit different in this situation you know you wouldn't you wouldn't want that on this the process of uh, these defects being generated starts right at the beginning of the development, he said. The builder, who has no training in design, then takes responsibility for the design done to date and completing the last half of the details. I think it's more than the last half of the details, but yeah, he's right on the money. But Mr. Taylor said, because the builder was operating on a tight budget, some subcontractors were frequently asked to finish the designs the way they'd see fit. Now that's the thing. That's fine. You can get a subcontractor to document it, but... It means me as the architect or the project manager has to ensure that it conforms with the design requirements. And 
that's usually extra money. So you can imagine in this situation I showed you as the architect, I mean, you know, say I'll bring this back. You're working here underneath the contractor, underneath the contractor, here's Florian, asking for more money to do a check. How do you think that's going to go down? How do you think they're going to feel about that? It gets tough. He said that would sometimes lead to tradespeople finishing the design while on the job. Yes. Yep. Guaranteed. The owners of Alara Apartments are still fighting legal battles to recoup their diminished investments, appealing a federal court decision that denied them access to compensation through a fund set up to compensate owners whose builders were insolvent. Responding to the Four Corners report, ACT Building Quality Minister Gordon Ramsay said the government should not shoulder responsibility for allowing poor work to be carried out in the first place. That's the reality of the way that it works. Mr. Ramsey said it was apparent many apartment blocks across Canberra had issues with defects. I think it's clear that there have been some builders who have been operating in the ACT and around Australia who are not building to the right level of quality, he said. There are some times where there's been action that has been taken either by people in the industry or by building surveys that are not of sufficient quality. Well, that's the thing. We don't need the government to come to the rescue. We just need to agree as a civilization that we want to set a law that design and construct is not allowed for these type of buildings. For any building where people are going to sleep in, no DNC. Right there. Simple. We are currently determining determined well, sorry, we're certainly determined we're following through on a range of reforms in that area to make sure that as we move forward from here, the, the building that does happen, the certification that does happen, the tradesman that does happen is all of high quality. That's politi political speak. Political speak. It's not going to address the fundamental issue. The way it's procured. Government considers develop, developer licensing in Nation First. Yeah, this is, I've done another video on this, on developer licensing in the ACT. Uh, it can have some advantages, but it's not going to solve the problems. Last year, it emerged the government was well behind its own deadlines for introducing a suite of changes designed to overhaul the Canberra construction industry. But Mr. Ramsey said the government was hard at work to ensure standards were lifted in the sector. The government plans to introduce mandatory education and testing for those seeking registration as a building certifier. And Mr. Ramsey said a professional code of practice had also been introduced. See, these are things... These are things as an architect, it shocks me because I'm, I'm a professional and I know a lot of people say they are and I, I mean, okay, you're looking at me on YouTube and I'm not wearing a suit. I can't be bothered right now. Uh, how's he a professional? I have an act, an act that I have to abide by, a code of conduct. Okay. And if someone makes a complaint about the profession you you're act the way you act in a profession they judge uh, in a professional capacity they judge you against that act that legislation so that's put in place to protect the community that's fundamentally one of the things as a professional you have to consider more than just your own gain which i know is very alien to a lot of people these days so you know this this is telling me that they're not a profession at least not an act not in, not in the way of the selfless capacity that is required but then again you know i'd say architecture is falling in that failing in that capacity and falling now mr ramsey said an industry code of practice was also being developed for the building industry and the government was exploring the possibility of licensing developers which would be an australian first the government also wants those purchasing units off the plan to take more control during the construction process it recently announced plans to force developers to notify buyers of major changes to development proposals made during construction after a sale, allowing buyers to terminate a contract where the final product significantly differed from what they'd agreed to purchase. That just seems like common sense, doesn't it? That just seems like common sense. The government also wants to hand more power to individual owners through owners' corporations, limiting the ability of de for developers to vote on matters relating to building defects. Again, that's another issue. I, I put a proposal to everyone where you have a in neutral third party sitting in on those meetings. It's another cost, but factor it in the construction as part of the defects liability period. Federal government has role to play, ACD government says. It's always, it, is it just me or does it feel like they're all passing the buck back, back and forth, doesn't it? But Mr. Ramsey said the federal government had the most important role to play in cracking down on developers leaving apartment owners high and dry after building defective 
defect defects emerged. The ACD government already has the power to strip builders of their licenses in order to prevent them building more properties in ACT. It's already done so in the Alara case, but could not prevent the builder from re-entering the industry as a developer, launching projects and contracting contracting the construction out to others. Despite that, the ACD government argued it was largely powerless to tackle one of the biggest problems on its face when chasing builders and developers over defects, companies falling and re-emerging under a different name. Yes, that's it. We, we need to go back to the Babylonian Babylonian building code, I think. If the occupants can't live in the, in the development the developer did, then they get to live in the developer's house. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. I, as the ACT government and a number of state and territory governments have done, call on the federal government to act really quickly as a matter of absolute priority. It's too late. I mean, good, but it's been 20 years. But opposition planning spokesman Mark uh, Parton said Mr. Ramsey should accept responsibility on behalf of the government for the situation in the ACT's apartment construction industry. Is the government partially responsible? The answer is yes, he said. Mr. Patton said if he were building quality minister, he would be willing to accept that responsibility himself. If I was in government, I believe I would, he said. There's been a lack of compliance. Well, you know, that's just a bit of posturing, I'd say. It feels like a bit of posturing. What do you think, guys? What do you think? I'm not surprised at all that it was a design and construct methodology, not in the slightest. I've been raising uh, my concerns about this process a lot, and uh, yeah, but it can it can work, guys. It can it can work in certain situations. You know, we've done forty million dollars worth, or two mines alone that were worth forty million dollars, with you know with builders and design and construct model. I went and visited years later. It's fine. The only only issues were. The builders were, were rough on the uh, toilet seat, and I think it, one broke after five years. But not the builders, no, sorry, the miners. The bloody miners. Anyway, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Please, uh, you know, get the word out. Help spread my videos. I like the fact the channel is growing. And thank you for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.